And as I mentioned to you earlier in the broadcast, we at HBO Sports have covered Mike Tyson for the past four years, bringing you every one of his fights since before he won the heavyweight championship. We believe we have profiled him and reported on him in virtually every way, shape, and form possible through a relationship which has not always been completely, completely friendly. In fact, we're in the middle of a period right now in which things are not all peaches and cream between our longtime colleague Mike Tyson and those of us at HBO. So with an eye toward that, we decided to look for fresh eyes and ears, an independent perspective on Tyson as we get ready for this look at him. And we have acquired the services of America's most provocative filmmaker, award-winning Spike Lee, who came to Atlantic City and went to Brooklyn also with a 35-millimeter film camera to produce a profile of Mike Tyson for us. And Spike, thanks very much for doing this. Welcome to our broadcast. Glad what was here. your perspective and your intention as you began this project for us? Well, what we wanted to do was just record what Mike and Don had to say. I felt that they would be very comfortable with us knowing me that they will let their defenses down because a lot of times you have to be careful what the media is or how the media is to betray them and we just want to document that up and we just let we just rolled the camera that's what we did we shot in 35 millimeter black and white and we approached it as if we were making a film you have said publicly that you regard yourself as a friend and a fan of mike tyson's right is this journalism or advocacy it's both i'm not gonna lie uh, i think that mike and don have got pummeled in the press a lot and if I could help them you know the not really change their image I think that there are a lot of people look at this piece and still not like them but uh I think that they have to make up their own minds we're gonna talk to Spike again after you have seen what you're about to see but we want to make this clear that this was Spike's baby we interfered in no way shape or form after we gave Spike the chance to bring a 35 millimeter camera here and to Brooklyn for this profile of Mike Tyson I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of anything. There's nothing that I'm afraid of, you know what I mean? And that's why I'm the individual that I am. You know what I mean? I used to, I used to walk it like I talk it. Um, from where I came from, I'm not supposed to even have made it. I'm not supposed, supposed to even to be, be living. Hey, my name is Victor Nelson. So what's up? Ain't nothing. Uh, well, I live right here in um, 178, and I knew Mike for about um, 12 years. And grew up together. And, you what know, name is this? This is Brownsville, and boy. Yeah, he had to knock that punch all ever since he was young. You ever see him knock some money out on the street? Yeah, he's having knock people out for me. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So now he's getting paid to knock people out. That's good for him. I like that. Hey, my brother. <laughs> Hey, let's do the right thing. That's all yes. How's Mike? How's Mike look? How's Mike, Mike looks excellent. He's in good shape. Good frame of mind. If you don't stand for something, you don't you don't live for nothing. He's you know? ready, right? He's been ready. Ready shot. He knocked out three sparring partners. All in one day. Been hurt now. Oh man, it changed him like you know, going in and out like a slot machine. What Joe Lewis said, you can run but you can't hide. So all we gotta do is bring the bring the prophecy to those words to reality. Ali got me into boxing. I was in Sparfit, like, um, that's a juvenile on a place in the Bronx. Right. And Ali came there, and when I saw him, I said, I want to be champ of the world. I want to be just like him. Everyone can't be um, Michael Jordan, uh, a world heavyweight champion, all that, or else, you know, I mean, a brain surgeon, which probably I could be, though. But, you know, you could be a brain <laughs> surgeon. I could spike, man. You know? Every ethnic group takes pride in their heroes. We have no heroes. Our heroes die. White heroes never die. They live infinitely. You know, the John Waynes and the different things, but Marvin Gaye, one of the superheroes of our time, you don't hear about him, but Elvis Presley has earned more money in death than most niggas can earn in life. Mike Tyson is our hero. He's our knight in shining armor. When he strikes a blow, he strikes a blow for all those who are, uh, are, are, are discriminated against, all those who are segregated against, all those who are the downtrodden, the underprivileged, and denied. He fights like a gladiator, like our white brothers can appreciate. This guy comes to fight. He comes naked with his shoes on. He's a gladiator. He signifies what he's about. I don't blame Holyfield and Buster Douglas for hating him because I was taught to hate Don King when I was in the business. Everything, everything's totally against us. We're two black guys from the ghetto and we're hustling and they don't like what we're saying, you know what I mean? It's not, we're not like prejudiced anti-white, we're just pro-black. I love white people. I love them like they love me. Here you have a young man named Mike Tyson who has been a very credible a champion, a credible challenger, and now is waiting his turn again. What they're trying to do is to get a groundswell of public opinion to avert and circumvent ever fighting Mike Tyson. They want him, number one, to either defect 
for me because he's, he's being represented by a black man, or number two, they want him to get frustrated and exas exasperated so that he will self-destruct. They always change the rules when black folks come into success. Black success is unacceptable. They say, oh, things are getting so much better for you. In 1849, it was hitting blacks on the head 100 times a day. In 1990, they hit them 48 times a day. Isn't it better? Oh, it's got to be better. You're, you're, you're saying 52 blows. You got to understand that white America has an uncanny way of making the victim the victimizer. Excuse me, master, for putting my head in the way of your club. Not that your club is brutalizing my head and putting hickeys on it. My head got in the way of your free swing and broke your shiny stick, and I want to apologize for that. Wait, 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 cut this a minute. The way people um, portray me in the press, those guys, if they had the nerve, they'd be just like me. They're a superstar, and regardless of their fields, they want to be able to say, you know what I mean? The white man's kicking my ass, you know what I mean? But they don't got the guts, you know what I mean? The reason they don't got the guts is because their minds have been suppressed. You know what I mean? Like most fighters in general, when you think about the issue, they're whores to the system. They don't know. They have no concept of what's going on in the business. The only thing they know is put on gloves. Most fighters wind up going to wind up broken, and that's something that's going to continue to happen as long as the game is here, because boxing is the only sport that's unorganized. You know what I mean? You don't have to be a college professor, you know what I mean? Guys, lawyers, you know what I mean? Get out of there for they retire from their field, the law field, and come into boxing because they feel that's the easy way they can make a dollar because they could pimp the fighters. Just speak this. up, Mike. We hear you. Talking. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to play this game called basketball today, OK? Yes. Most of you are not a player that's better than me, so we're going to try to do something. What, you, you want me to dunk on your money? Mommy? Talk no boy. I know. You, you a boss, man. Do what you can do. Do it. Do it. What you want me to do? What you want me to do? What you want me to do? together works. When well, you and I together, it's undeniable. It's a combination that's unbeatable. I love it when Jews love the Jews. I think that's noble. The Italians love Italians. When Irish love Irish. But when a nigga loves a nigga, it's an unpardonable sin. We can't be white. You're a nigga till you die. If you're a poor nigga, you're a poor nigga. If you're a rich nigga, you're a rich nigga. But you never stop being a nigga. And if you get to be educated, you're just an educated nigga. You understand? <laughs> Depravity, poverty, ignorance, lecherousness, lewdness, evil. Everything that was negative and unholy was attributed to the black people. And everything that was holy and glor glorified was attributed to the white people. The money, the wealth, the power. And with the blacks, is the powerlessness that we have to be able to deal with against the power. You got to understand that negative associations coupled with blackness is what make these things happen. It's been a condition of racism since this country was founded 400 years ago. Because working together works. <laughs> Go ahead. And I refuse, you know what I mean, to be like the rest of the brothers, you know what I mean? They evaluate their success by how far they can get away from the other niggas. They say, well, ooh, I live in Beverly Hills, a number of white people around my neighborhood, so I know I'm successful. You know what I mean? That's that's cool, you know what I mean? If you want the ego, you want that on your address, you know, this is where I live, and you tell them to go back. But go back to the neighborhood and tell the brother, this is where I live at, man, come see me. You know what I mean? Don't just say, well, this is where I want to be, and this is where I'm going to stay. I want to stay where I want to meet the friends around the neighborhood. You know what I mean? Because that's not reality. That's not reality at all. And reality, you know, means a lot to me because I live it. I know who I am, and I know what I represent. I'm happy with myself, you know what I mean? I'm happy with who I am. A provocative climax to a provocative look at Mike Tyson. HBO Sports prepares for the main event. Coming up, Mike Tyson's second assignment in the post-Tokyo era of his career against Alex Stewart, a man whose only professional loss was to the man who now holds the heavyweight championship, Evander Holyfield. And we bring you back live once again to ringside. I'm still joined by Spike Lee, and Spike, it was a fascinating piece. Now let me play devil's advocate with you right. on behalf of any of our, view our viewers who might be a little bit confused. Mike Tyson and Don King have achieved identity, money, fame, power, status, most of the things that we think of ourselves as striving for in this commercial society. Why are they so angry? Well, they think that they're getting the raw deal, that they haven't been betrayed. Uh correctly or truthfully in the press. 
And I have to agree with you. I think that any time you're, when you're African-American in this country and you and achieve any level of success, people just come after you. I mean, I know I'm, I mean, they're beating my, they're beating my me now. I mean, they're, they're killing David Dinkins in New York since he's become mayor. It's just, it just happens. I mean, we realize this, we realize why it happens. So for me, it just rolls off my back. But I think that they've gotten a bum deal, Mike and Don. Don King says that there are no black heroes in this nation. Uh, at the risk of sounding a little bit tokenist, aren't people like Michael Jordan and Bill Cosby and to a large extent Spike Lee treated as heroes by this society? Well, I don't know if we'd be treated as heroes. I think that, that was a little exaggeration on his part. But we, when you go into the history books, I mean, we can't even get Martin Luther King's birthday, you know, in Arizona. So, I mean, that's a disgrace. So that's what he's talking about. I'm glad the commission in NFL took the, took the Super Bowl out of Phoenix. What does Mike Tyson mean, above and beyond any other American boxer, to kids in the ghettos, in the inner city? Well, I think that for any ethnic group, any time that when you're on the bottom rung of the ladder and one of your own is able to squeeze out that little hole, it gives you hope. And I think that uh, that's what Mike Tyson has done with this. I, but I think the problem is that people get lulled into sleep. They think that because black Americans, because African Americans have Bill Cosby, Oprah Winfrey, Eddie, Eddie Murphy, we go on and on, that means everything's okay. Because, because we have Prince and Michael Jackson, that everything's all right for black Americans. But those are a couple of people. There's 30 million African Americans in the country, most of us, and most of us are catching hell. So we can't look at the one and two success stories, people being able to, to sneak through the cracks. Many thanks, and welcome to HBO. Thank you, Jim. Larry Merchant, what do you think of that? Boxing has seen snake oil salesmen of every size and shape and stripe and color, all with one consuming passion in life, to capture and then to keep money-making fighters. What Spike Lee showed us in part is that Don King does it by wrapping himself in the emotional flags of race and racial injustice. He has been pummeled, it should be pointed out, by black fighters like Larry Holmes and Buster Douglas and Tim Witherspoon, whom he promoted. Spike Lee also separated for us the Mike Tyson of past and the Mike Tyson of the present as a public figure. Mike Tyson used to be this troubled youngster who was saved from the streets and then nurtured and developed into a champion. Now Mike Tyson wants to tell us that you can get out of the kid, can get out of the ghetto, but you can't get the ghetto out of the kid. And that's how he's going to recapture the heavyweight championship. And he just might do it. Finally, Spike Lee showed us that Mike Tyson throws as many bricks on the basketball court as he does in the ring. Here's a look at the man he's going to be throwing those bricks at tonight, Alex Stewart. <laughs>